Okay, so this is a very bread and butter heme onc question for step one with some good cardio uh, points as well. This could be a long discussion. I'll keep this as concise as I can be. We have a 58 year old woman, four month history, shortness of breath with exertion. She has an S4 heart sound on auscultation. Echo shows normal ejection fraction, high ESR. And we have a smear here where you say, no idea what I'm fucking looking at. It's okay, relax, I'll explain it in a second. And the question asks for the direct explanation for the cardiac findings. So we have an S4 heart sound. When you see this in a vignette, this is essentially synonymous with diastolic dysfunction, a stiffened left ventricle almost always. It can be due to things such as systemic hypertension, where we have increased afterload on the left ventricle, causing it to stiffen. Uh, aortic stenosis, hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy. Okay, once again, afterload. Those are systolic murmurs, but they can cause the diastolic S4 heart sound. Can also be due to restrictive cardiomyopathies, e.g. fibrosis, history of radiation, uh, amyloidosis. Now, S4 can rarely be right-sided. I've seen two CK level questions, severe mitral stenosis, history of rheumatic heart disease, where it backs up to the right heart. Now, in contrast, S3 heart sound, systolic dysfunction, volume overload, uh, dilated cardiomyopathy, okay? Can rarely be physiologic, the S3 pregnancy, high preload with uh, high endurance athletes, like triathletes. Now, we're gonna keep reading here. The echo shows normal ejection fraction. This is corroborating of diastolic dysfunction. If you get an arrow question on the step one where they say in diastolic dysfunction, uh, what do you expect? You're gonna select no change ejection fraction. That's really high yield. You're gonna select increased left ventricular end diastolic pressure, normal left ventricular end diastolic volume, which sounds weird because if the heart can't expand as well as it should, you say, why would you have normal volume it's because you're able to achieve the normal volume. It just requires more pressure to get there. And in contrast, if we had an S3 systolic dysfunction, we'd have decreased ejection fraction and then up arrows for left ventricular and diastolic pressure and volume. Keep reading. High ESR, this just generally reflects uh, an inflammatory state. The RBCs will sediment out more quickly when there's inflammatory acute phase proteins floating around that stick to the RBCs and cause them, when they when they aggregate, uh, they're, they're just heavier and they'll precipitate out more quickly. So we look at our smear here. This is showing us the characteristic clock face chromatin of multiple myeloma. And these large purple basophilic nuclei, these large circular nuclei, if you look within them, you can see there's even more darkly staining basophilic areas, the dark purple, uh, that's circumferential. This is referred to as clock face chromatin. Call it weird. I don't know what to tell you, but it's a high yield image. This is multiple myeloma. So this clock face chromatin. Now we look at uh, this clear area. This is just a perinuclear halo, okay, a perinuclear clearing. And then these light purple almost look uh, crescentic. This is just uh, cytoplasm, okay? So clock face chromatin, multiple myeloma. There are some high yield blood smears for the step. Uh, tangentially, of course, like AML with your hour rods, that's another one, right? Uh, but this is multiple myeloma. Now, we had a pretty vague vignette with a high yield smear. That's how we get to the diagnosis here. They might not give you a smear and then they'll give you things like, oh, older patient with back pain, with back pain who has hypercalcemia, pepper pot skull, Okay, uh, Benz Jones proteinuria. Okay, so multiple myeloma is a cancer of plasma cells, mature B cells that secrete immunoglobulins. Immunoglobulins are proteins. So those proteins, they fly through the kidney, you get your Benz Jones proteinuria, but those proteins also deposit in the renal parenchyma. They shouldn't be doing that, but they do. When you have proteins depositing in tissues when they shouldn't be depositing there, that's called amyloidosis. Multiple myeloma is the most common cause of renal amyloidosis. It's a nephrotic syndrome. Multiple myeloma is also one of the most common causes of cardiac amyloidosis. I've seen probably three or four variants of cardi cardiac amyloidosis in NBME questions, always multiple myeloma, okay? So it's really high yield. Now, even though multiple myeloma is a cancer of plasma cells, it's not the plasma cells themselves depositing in the parenchyma of tissues causing amyloidosis. As we just said, it's proteins. So we look at the answer here, the answer choices here, it's gonna be lambda light chain deposition. Could be kappa, 
okay? But lambda, kappa, light chain deposition, this refers to our immunoglobulins from multiple myeloma, what the plasma cells are secreting, okay? Now, beta-2 microglobulin, this actually can be elevated in multiple myeloma, but it's just not the answer. Beta-2 microglobulin is a component of MHC1. It can also be elevated in patients who have renal failure, like dialysis patients. Blast crisis, this is a term that refers to uh, CML, chronic myelogenous leukemia, that has progressed to a greater than 20 or 30 percent blast uh, phase, where you do the uh, the blood smears, and you're going to see uh, greater than 20 or 30 percent blasts, okay, uh, where CML actually resembles an AML. It's just called a blast crisis. It's a distractor here. Um, serum amyloid A protein, this is an acute phase protein secreted by the liver in response to inflammation. It's also uh, apparently a component of uh, HDL, okay, facilitating cholesterol transfer with HDL. And as we just said, plasma cell infiltration is not the answer, although multiple myeloma is a cancer of plasma cells. Okay, so there's a lot we can talk about, uh, but you know, as far as just multiple myeloma, Waldenstrom macroglobulinemia, we can make this a long clip, but your take home is knowing the difference between diastolic dysfunction, systolic dysfunction, knowing this smear is clock face chromatin, multiple myeloma, and then if you get a question with very similar answer choices and you're not really sure which one to pick, it's going to be the immunoglobulin light chain deposition in the heart, in the kidney, that's going to be causing the cardiac and renal amyloidoses respectively, okay? So obviously I'll make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel, and I appreciate your time. That's it.